Taylor, thanks for joining us, man. You know, we we met. I bellied up to the bar a couple probably mm-hmm. couple months ago at this point, and uh, and got to know you just a little bit then. But um, man, what's your background with the with the beer company? So my background is partner and I guess you could say master of all and none at the same time. <laughs> I hear um, but I. I came to them. Um, I was working for Chick-fil-A as the regional uh, marketing director um, based out of Mount Airy here. Um, and Mount Airy was really, it is home to me. Um, and it has a near and dear place in my heart. And I didn't feel like that my work was done in Mount Airy. And um, by some happenstance, um, through our little beer community here, folks were talking about this little up and coming spot in Mount Airy. Um, and I honestly had no idea about it, who they were, um, all that kind of stuff. And like we, we, we had spoke about, um, I was on a dude's weekend and, uh, guys were talking about that, you know, kind of goals and ambitions for the next couple of years. And just kind of said that if Chick-fil-A is not going to be it, then why don't you try to do something in the beer or bourbon industry? Um, and it just so happened that that weekend was when Granite City Brews is what we were initially called before. Um, had opened up and I was like you know what everybody keeps talking about these folks and they're met them in my life I'm gonna take the initiative I'm gonna go meet them um, and check out the spot and check out what they're doing in Mount Airy um, when I get back from the trip so I got back from that trip um, came in Monday after finishing some stuff up um, to grab a beer and uh, Luke Todd's dad was in there um, and he looked at me and he goes you Taylor and I said I am I said uh, who are you and he said I'm Todd and so the rest of it from there was uh, history took the leap um, to come on board and help them out. Um, and so, yeah, so I'm the, I would like to say that Luke and I are kind of the face of this, this enterprise. Um, and we handle all the, the day-to-day operations as far as brewing and, and um, managing staff um, and everything else, all the above for the most part. We have six part-time bar staff and then eight, including Luke and myself. And this is five years in the making, or what's the history so far? Six. Six, six years. Yep. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. Yep. Yeah. We started out as a bottle shop in 2015 and then transitioned to brewing in 2016. Yeah. How'd you guys well, navigate what happened last year? Well, certainly there was no blueprint to that. Um, and I think that one, one, one good thing that came out of, you know, the pandemic last year was the fact that since creativity, um, and in fact, there's no blueprint to how to survive it. it. It kind of forced you to stay on your toes and become creative in how you continue to sell your product, you know, new little initiatives to try to, to try to make ends meet. Um, and we were very fortunate to have a very loyal fan base, not only in Mount Airy, but also in North Carolina. Um, I know that there were several breweries in Winston, you know, i.e. Uh, wise man, uh, fill and fish that we all kind of strung together and support each other to where we would take trips throughout the week and go buy beer from other breweries um, across the area just to kind of you know do what we could to kind of help keep them afloat um, but I would say that, that really what helped us is you know the loyalty of the patronages of the, of the patrons here at the White Elephant. Um, what happened last year exposed weakness in business mm-hmm. but it also exposed strengths and what you just touched on is you guys have uh, and I won't say unknowingly, but yeah, I didn't, yeah. didn't realize the value of it that would come into play last year, uh, certainly. So what you guys cultivated with the community really paid forward when it came down to it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. it, and it exposed a strength that you've created over time. So I think we Absolutely. we haven't spent enough time. It's just a good lesson and, and thought process for me as a coach. Um, we haven't spent enough time over the last year and a half thinking about what strengths were exposed mm-hmm. in in the business community. And um, and you said the word creative a couple of times in there, and that's what it was all about, getting creative. How do we serve our marketplace? How do we serve our people? How do we serve one another? You know, uh, collaborating, mm-hmm. collaborating with the other breweries. I mean, that's awesome. So um good on you man that's good so tell us about what you're excited about moving forward here i think well i mean me personally what i'm most excited about right now is the fact that i think you know coming off of a pandemic year 2021 and 2022 is going to be set up to be um you know potentially our biggest years yet um i know that had we not had that little 10 weeks stint during the pandemic 2020 would have been our best year to date um and we had some plans in 2020 to do um some big time canning and, and maybe even a, a, a small 
expansion on our brew system. Um, so that kind of got put on the back burner. But right now, you know, the, you know, it's uh, we're just looking to try to make as much beer as possible and to sell it as quickly and as efficiently as we can. Um, but I think really there's uh, the sense of getting your feet back on you. I think, you know, from the pandemic standpoint, it's going to take a while for everybody to, to get their feet and their, their foundations back. You know, even if it's, you know, 10 weeks for us is, you know, pretty difficult to come back from, but, you know, there's businesses that have a whole year that they're having to, you know, recoup and, and try to figure out a way to bounce back from. Um, so definitely what I'm excited about is just the unknown. Um, if that makes sense. Yeah. And because there's definitely growth in this and just to kind of see what that is and where it comes from and, and, and how organic it is. And, um, I'm just always a very optimistic individual and the thought of the unknown and the thought of the future and what that holds is always exciting. The taproom sales have just gone through the roof and to be able to continue to have product on tap at all times um, has been a little bit of a challenge, but it's a good yeah. challenge to have um, and just see, you know, see where we can continue to try to maintain that and keep up with it and uh, hopefully get some new tanks in there and um, get some get some more volume rolling out of the white elephant. And even maybe in the next couple of years, maybe look at expanding a new location, either Winston or Greensboro, potentially. Or, or Fiji, you know, somewhere cool. Yeah, right? yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah, I mean, as you're talking, it's just like all these other questions are coming to mind. Mm -hmm. so, so the next time we do one of these, uh, these uh, workshops, uh, maybe we'll dig into some different uh, subject or topics yeah about about white elephant because it's got i've got other questions uh now but we just don't have time to dig into too much but man thanks for your time today taylor and thanks yeah. for support, thanks for supporting the workshops and um absolutely yeah i'm excited about what we can uh work together to serve an additional facet of the community on here so um i appreciate and your support I, with that absolutely anything we can do to help you just let us know and i you know and the thing is i think that we if we can focus more on how uh, there's there's a there's a term that I love and it's called relational equity. Huh. Um, and you can never invest too much into it and you never, cause you'll never know what you'll get out of it in the long term. That's right. So just right. the more that we can focus on serving each other and, you know, our business partners, um, the wealth and the worth of that, we, we may never know, but at some point in time, you know, just like we experienced in the pandemic, you know, the love and the care that we showed to our community and through our patrons, you know, it, it paid it back tenfold and getting us through that what well, could, could have potentially been a very disastrous time for us and so just you know never underestimate the power of being a good and nice human 